This is terrible. Residents coping with the damage after gunfire erupted on Fayette Street yesterday. A tire blown, a bullet piercing a wall into a second story bedroom where Shalom Adewali lives. I'm just grateful to God, honestly, that he got me out the house that day. She was at work when the shooting happened. The bullet also damaged her television. If I was home, I know exactly where I would be sitting. Um, the cops um, were able to find the bullet and locate where the bullet was, and it was right next to That's a well spoken son sister. You would tell she ain't from America. She's Adamoli, what the Molly, what the fuck is her name? That's a link. That's the city I'm in right now. She from goddamn um she from goddamn Nigeria, man. Them Nigerians would be smart, man. Oh, a bullet piercing a wall into a second story bedroom where Shalom Adawali lives. Shalom Adawali, yeah. She got Nigerian. some pretty skin. Yeah, she 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 yeah, she got going on, man. She gonna make a white man very happy. Nigga don't niggas niggas. We ain't yeah, they don't. Shit. She got in order for a black man to want her. She got throw them eyelashes on. <laughs> they long, <laughs> silky, pretty weave on her head. Nah, she long pretty, ass, pretty, pretty nails. Pretty. And I promise she you, she can be her son man like that. Nah, the white she, she, she the African girl, the African girls out here they do the same thing for the white dudes too. Yeah, the white dude going white dudes like that shit. White dudes be liking them, man. Thing, um, the pretty. cops um, were able to find the bullet and locate where the bullet was, and it was right next to my bed. Shortly before five yesterday, surveillance shows a boy on a moped, a white car following. Then police say a man in the vehicle starts shooting. The 15-year-old falls to the ground, then runs off. He was struck in both legs. And then in the arm, and then in the back as well. Yeah, he's not running like that. Yeah, Gladys in trouble. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, that's that, that's an um, that's a win right there. Like he fell the off the bike too. That's a that that's an injuries too. He got injuries from falling off the bike. Following, then police say a man oh. in the vehicle starts shooting. The 15 year old falls to the ground, then runs off. He was struck in. That was adrenaline. He knew the niggas trying to kill him. Salute to the left 247, aka the real MVP, aka Kevin. Salute to once again. Both legs, and then in the arm, and then in the back as well. I hear the shots by continually. Boom, 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 boom. Ignacio Tello was so rattled, he drove his team to school today. I bring my son to the school. He did. <laughs> yeah. The school is right there, but. I, I said, okay, yeah, that's my son's now, school too. Kid, I, I gonna pick kid oh, up. you you live in this neighborhood? Yeah. Oh wow. That, this this is this is like a little outskirts of Boston. This is like yeah. when it's like when when back. Yeah, yeah. Is it sunny? Is it su sunny out here? It's it's like a mixed part. It's like Cambodians, Africans, Haitians. Oh, so um, these were Cambodians that did this shooting. Awesome and Britos. And Britos heavy out here. Heavy. So you could this could have yeah. been on Britos too? Yeah, that's definitely definitely on Britos. Okay. An act of violence leaving many in the area troubled. It broke my heart because I did I've grown up in this neighborhood and I know growing up here there was a lot of gun violence. This is the first time in such a long time that something like this has happened. So and shortly show. after the shooting, She's police well, officers so. did track down the vehicle involved less than a mile away from the crime scene. At this point, no arrests have been made. Hey, boss, if you off to a rocky start, um, shit, um, god damn, Bean Town was really good, man. Um, <laughs> shit, man. Now these are outskirts. You gotta go to like. Like the city I'm from, like Dorchester, Roxbury, like those little areas. This like the outskirts out here. Yeah, they, get, they get it cracking out here, but it's not as crazy as like being in really Boston, Boston. Oh yeah, they get it, they get it cracking. Um, okay, let's see this one. I've investigates has learned that there are now calls for a top to bottom review after a Boston detective and a Suffolk County prosecutor are tied to at least two wrongful convictions. Our Mike Bodette sat down with the wrongfully convicted men at the center of those cases. Mike. Maria, a Suffolk County judge agreed to throw out Barry Kamara's murder conviction yesterday. The similarities between his case and another one have some people now demanding a full review of all murder convictions that the detective and the prosecutor worked on.
I was arrested. That was the worst day. Yesterday was the best day I had. Court all rise. Barry Kamara gets a hug from Robert Foxworth inside Suffolk Superior Court Tuesday after a judge agrees to overturn Kamara's conviction for a 1991 murder in Dorchester. Foxworth had his own 1991 Boston murder conviction thrown out back in 2021. Kamara was 17 when he was arrested. Foxworth was 23. Together they Foxworth did this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he did something. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, man. No, man. He, he, no, man. They, man, they don't just be. Listen, man. I'm, everybody up here knows. They don't just be picking. They not just gonna come up to one of us and be like, "Hey, man, you." It don't work like that, man. When they pick you up for a murder, man, you yeah, link. Got you. You, you link somehow. Yeah, but you link somehow. Either you were there, you were part of the gang, or you was seen running from the scene, or somebody snitched on you. It ain't just like. All right, there was a murder around this neighborhood. Uh, let's just find a black dude and just bring him. Like, yeah, <laughs> hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Kamara was 17 when he was arrested. Foxworth was 23. Together, they spent nearly 50 years in prison for crimes they didn't commit. In both cases, evidence that could have pointed to the real killers was never turned over to their attorneys. But that's not all they have in common. The same Boston police detective and Suffolk County prosecutor worked on both cases. It's a pattern. It, this is a, a, an illegal pattern, a pattern of misconduct that seems like no one wants to look into or deal with. What are you trying to happen now? You have to look into the cases that these cops and this, and this prosecutor handle. And the only reason Barry's case came to me was because of the publicity from Robert Foxworth's case. Attorney Amy Belger represents the men. Oh, God, I know they did it. She, she, she's involved. <laughs> if she's involved, I know they did it, man. Because a white woman, she, 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 they can't do, they, they just can't get right, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the DNA, right, man. It's the DNA, man. Yeah, the they exactly. It's the DNA, man. They they did that shit. It's 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 some other reason other than the fact that they didn't do it that they get exonerated. I would like to know why they were brought in. You know what I'm saying? Like, what made them bring them in for the murder, and what made them get a conviction? Because they acting like you just. They just they just convict people like it's hard to get a conviction for a murder. It's so hard. You gotta have a body. You gotta have a weapon. You gotta have. You gotta put the person on the scene. If you can't put him on the scene, you can't convict him. So they had to have in the court. They had to have. They had the body, of course. They had to put him on the scene. They even needed a weapon, a, a witness. You, they can't just say, "Are oh, you black? You did it." it. It just don't work like that. Brothers beat murders. Ninety going north. Barry's case came to me was because of the publicity from Robert Foxworth's case. Attorney Amy Belger represents the men. In both cases, it looks intentional. It looks like they did this on purpose. It wasn't an accident. No one made a mistake. Belger is calling for an independent review of all cases the police detective and the prosecutor worked on. Both men are dead. I don't believe that these are the only two wrongfully convicted innocent people that are victims. They took away a youth. You know, for my family. <clears throat> Barry Kamara is... I want to see some real anger too, man. I'm sorry, man. If, listen... <laughs> If, 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 no bullshit. If, if, listen, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. It's a true story. I called the police on my wife one time, right? Because she was ripping up my baby pictures and broke my computer and everything. And this is when I was staying with my sister, trying to get away, right? So she came over there acting a fool, blah, 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 right? I called the police on them. 
Long story short, police locked both of us up. Right? The the two white officers that showed up was going to let was was just going to talk to us and you know, blah blah blah. The black woman fucking um captain came on the scene because it started getting real ghetto. People started coming around. Da, 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 da. So they called the captain to the scene. She came up, said, "Double click, lock both of them up, lock both of us up." I was mad as shit. I spent the weekend in jail. I was hot because I had to spend the weekend in jail. I be mean, mad as shit. I'm downtown one day, downtown DC, and I seen her. It was like a parade. No, it was a, it was a protest downtown DC, and I was down there with um um with some people, and they would. I was just observing it, right? And I saw her doing um like. Um, she was part of a team that I guess was blocking off this certain street. Man, I ran up on her. I was like, no, you fucked up for what you did. And she looked at me like she seen a ghost because she knew who the fuck I was. And I, she was like, and she just didn't say nothing. I was like, that's fucked up what you did. That's fucked up what you did. And I, when I walked off, right? And I was just from spending a weekend in jail, man. <laughs> <laughs> That was for spending a weekend. She probably saved y'all life, huh? No doubt, no doubt. I mean, it, if she she could have too, and 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 and, and, and she, you know, what I'm saying because it was getting real. It was it was it, she could have she could have you know whatever. But I'm just saying, I was mad about it at that time. Yeah, and these and, niggas seen it here, just like. <laughs> Like they got their order messed up or something. Like 50 years, your whole life gone. I'll be so mad. I'll be crying. I look rough. I won't even look this nice. Well, how long can you hold to hate? I mean, how long can you hold to anger? Like, if you're stuck somewhere 50 years, is it really is it, is it can, making, me, no. making any sense listen, to hold on to that? Some man will kill. Listen, do you, read, do you see the stories where some people kill people over things they kill people over? You mean cocky yeah. store that ain't yeah, kill you, man. Niggas Someday kill your ass if you cut in line at the fucking grocery store. That's 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 very that's very but uh, that's a very immediate. This guy if someone spent fifty years in prison and they found that they were they were you know find out that it was you know, it was it was it was a huge mad. mistake and they were let Some out. Man gonna be mad. Some man gonna be you gonna be mad. mad fifty years and then you finally get out. And then the folks that did it did, so you can't cuss them out. Marcy, you gotta think about it. You didn't do it. Not like you did it and the white lady think you the white lady believe your little bullshit story and she like you like all right, they going I'm talking about you really didn't do it. Trust me, I I I I understand. Trust me, I understand that. Fuck off, nigga. What? I'm not saying 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 I'm not not the cop yes. was racist. Not they what? pulling all the files and exonerating oh. everybody. You really didn't do that shit. <laughs> even Bro, if you, I'm, even if you want to look at it from like a Christian point of view, <laughs> you still be mad as hell. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. These dudes, they this is some shit where like you know they pulling all the cop files because they was racist and everybody gonna get out. That's some shit where it's like, yeah, yeah, man, it's fucked up, man. Dude. But if you really didn't do that shit, like you was, you was somewhere, motherfucking, um, you was getting something to eat and shit, and the cops just picked you up, so you did. You like, man, I didn't do it, man. What are you talking about, man? No, go to jail, and you in jail, and you like, oh shit, what the fuck? I didn't do anything. Nah, you gonna be pissed off, man. Pissed off. Trust me, you gonna be pissed. Trust me, I didn't. <laughs> Sure, I, I did three and a half years. Trust me, you will be pissed if you didn't do it. I'm not, oh. I'm not saying you would be pissed off. I'm saying, I'm saying for how I'm saying how long and how far how far do you take it? Because you're gonna be pissed off for that long. I mean, you have to kill everybody. 
if you get you get out, say, I'm gonna kill everybody who was involved. I'm gonna kill I'm gonna kill a pizza delivery guy who delivered pizza to the cops who were who will work on the case. You're just gonna be you just gonna be thinking you're just gonna be thinking about all that for that long. At some point, you just you know just had to just let it go because it's not doing you any good. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah, but in the but, interview, they just so calm. Like he's like, I, I miss my my teenage years. Like he act like he was in a coma or something. Dude, you was in a freaking prison. <laughs> yeah, man. Real shit, real shit, real shit. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, yeah, man. Let me move along, man. The only two wrongfully convicted innocent people that are victims. No, they took away a youth. You know, for my family. <clears throat> Barry Kamara is looking to the future. Just live a normal life. You know, family, work, community. He's been free on parole since 2009. Community, oh, he about to be a, a violence interrupter. He about to, he about to stab somebody. Yeah, he about to, he about to get he about to get this and he about to get his money, man. Go be a violence interrupter, dude. Fine, but the conviction has hung over him. You no, know, they have the the power to do what they did, without being held accountable. And they also have the power you know, to do the right thing. I wish we knew the case, man. Yeah, ain't hug nobody black yet. <laughs> Because there ain't nobody black help his ass. It was all fucking gliders. But here's the thing, though. I would love to hear these cases, man. Because usually when we hear the case, it's like his friend snitched on him. And it's like, oh, okay. So it wasn't racist. And your best friend told him. Told the fucking police. Or the Whedon's was the crackhead. And they deemed him unreliable. But he actually seen him do the shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of the shooters in the gang and shit. He was a no shooter, and but you didn't do this one or some shit like that. Yeah. I would love to know the circumstances. But. Kamara says he's grateful. The Suffolk County District Attorney's Office supported his request to have his conviction overturned, but he's also asking for the full review of all cases tied to the detective and the prosecutor. The DA's office declined to comment on these calls for a re-examination of... Mm. That jail saved him and that man life. Yep. Because if they was already in the streets, they probably end up dead anyway. Yep. My oh yeah, son, man, yeah. It does save your life. See, so you been jail that weekend that saved you and your wife life. Yeah, that was a weekend though. But yeah, it could have saved me from killing somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. Or she could have yeah. did you like old girl did on Facebook Live. Right, 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 right. Yeah, man. Um. Let's see this one, man. Tuesday afternoon around 5.30, neighbors see a teen in a red coat walking down Porter Street with a long gun. Look closely. He's swinging that rifle in his left hand as he walks. And I wondered, who's this walking down the street with a gun openly just like that? Today, police arrested a teen who they say hid in a mail truck Tuesday afternoon as the postal carrier walked his route. And when the carrier returned to the truck, Police say that teen threatened him with an air gun and then slashed the mailman with a machete. And I saw blood dripping down his hand, so I was like, oh my God, what happened? Neighbors here are stunned that anyone would attack a federal employee just delivering mail in the light of day. This is the carrier getting help from first responders. It's a good thing he didn't stay in the vehicle and, and give the person the keys or something or Before. drive the person somewhere. It's the latest in a series of attacks on mail carriers in recent months. The suspects accused of stealing universal keys that open those blue mailboxes, giving the criminals access to checks in the mail that can be. They need to make this shit. Prosecutors need because since this is a federal crime, prosecutors need to throw the book at these dudes, man. You fucking with people's mail, man. People, people, bills. Man, that's that. That's that. They need to crack down on this shit. They know not do that. Uh, my old hood. Yeah, man. Look at this motherfucker. These look like sons too, but they might be a Cape Verdean. Don't you got a lot of Cape Verdeans up there? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yeah, but they son, are they, they sons, right? No, they like, sons, they're like the coast of Africa. Yeah, they sons. So these some, they, these some Africans. They did yeah, this. Because they, they got a machete. You lock those sons. Portuguese, they like, they like Portuguese mixed with um Africans. Shit. Yeah. 
that open those blue mailboxes, giving the criminals access to checks in the mail that can be reprinted and cashed. This time, the carrier fought back and got slashed in the process. The wicked, nice guy. He's, he's you know, friendly. A colleague today reassured Lowell neighbors that their regular carrier is recovering. But he was okay. He got a few stitches, and they said he'll be back to work probably next week. But the incident has hey, no. this quiet neighborhood. That's so sad. If it makes you feel it's not safe out here. Now, the mail carrier was treated for cuts on his hand and wrist. Uh, they picked up that teenage boy only a couple of blocks from the scene of the attack here on Porter Street. And this is a serious crime, of course, to attack, to assault a federal employee. Must be a glider talking about he going to be back at work next week because they've been a son man. He, <laughs> he retired. <laughs> yeah, <there's something laughs> he you, you gonna have to cash him all out. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's some real shit. Yeah. Damn, Boston. Well, Boston is Boston is a little bit. Mm, Crazy than I was expecting, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I wasn't expecting all this in, in Bean Town, man. No, nah, it's uh, dry right now because it's a little cold. It's a little dry right now. It's getting a little warm. It's dry. What the hell's going on, man? Um, oh, it must be my Wi Fi or some shit. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Um, let me see. Okay, there you go. This all happened last Thursday morning. A 17 year old student was stabbed by another student, and these two mentors happened to be there in the hallway and they jumped into action. It makes you feel like what you're doing on a daily basis is worth it. John Williams and Rakem Turner are mentors to students in Brockton. As long as someone's listening, that we can help change minds and keep yeah, kids on the right path. Their roles with the Get You to the Gate program took a frightening turn last Thursday when a student stabbed another at the Huntington Therapeutic Day School. He was already in the stabbing motion, so I knew that the young, other young person was injured already. I just didn't know how bad and I didn't want it to get worse. Williams and Turner were monitoring students from a different school in the same building when they stepped in to stop the stabbing. By the time I got there, that's when I realized there was a weapon involved and I needed to literally stop and only take a second to think what happens next. The pair says they got the knife away and held the student down while others tended to the victim. I feel blessed to have been able to have the capacity to deal with that situation. Williams says the incident is another example of why all schools should take a closer look at mental health and safety. We have to look at uh, our safety protocols in our schools. We have to look at the accountability of each one of our students at all times. Salute to these brothers, man. Salute to these sons, man. These are some good brothers, man. Very well yeah. spoken, man. Very. They they were no arms, no. Oh uh, god damn man, I just man. They didn't the whoop the boy ass with the knife. Man. They did scorpion squad him. <laughs> they just. They just <laughs> express, express, they express what happened very coherently. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can understand what the fuck happened. It wasn't like a whole. It wasn't like speaking another language. And shit. They spoke English and shit. Salute to these brothers, man. Um, and then they, um, you know, they seem like some good brothers, man. Salute to these brothers, man. Salute to these brothers, man. I think these are some good brothers, man. Thanks. The 17-year-old student did survive that stabbing. A 16-year-old suspect has been charged, and the district is checking metal detectors at all schools. Live in Brockton, Sarah Conji, WC. Mm, salute to those brothers, man. Salute, man, to you brothers, man. Next week's going to be a drive-by problem. You know they got to retaliate. Maybe, man. Um, you never know, man. Um, drive-by stabbing? Yeah, oh. they got drive. They got they got fucking hit and runs and shit up here. God damn, they got so many hit and runs up here. 
What's wrong with y'all up here hitting and running everybody? Shit. You can see busy North Quincy yeah, that's Street a big thing. behind that's a big thing This out here. is where Leland Thompson was trying to cross the road when he was hit by two SUVs. The driver of one didn't stop. And tonight his family tells me they will not stop searching until that driver is found. It's an old, old radio that was his. In their garage, Bonnie McDonald and Dwayne Thompson hold on to things that belong to Leland. Not sure if it works or whatever, but we were going to keep it anyways. Investigators say 70 year old Leland Thompson was crossing North Quincy Street the last night of February when he was hit by two SUVs. Police say the first driver stopped, but the second, a person driving a white Jeep Wrangler kept going. I would think it would bother somebody at some point that they would say, OK, OK, I'm going to come forward. It was me. But that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> and Dwayne Thompson says it's been. What world do these people live in? If he was drunk, he probably don't remember. These people are fucking crazy, man. Yeah, according to uh, police and the police report, she used some of that stolen money to allegedly buy a Tesla to pay for a big trip to Hawaii, as well as do some shopping at Louis Vuitton. That's the sun one. Ariel Foster on Instagram was proudly posting about her new Tesla last month, commenting, my biggest flex is being able to buy my own Tesla full out under 20 years old. But it turns out she allegedly bought the $35,000 vehicle with money Burlington police say she stole. Ms. Foster, good morning. The 19-year-old from Dorchester was in court today, accused of stealing more than half a million dollars in a credit card scheme. Pros <laughs> What's wrong with us, man? Why did you have to go live? <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. I'm, I'm proud of her for stealing half a million. Yeah, yeah, that game is big. That, that game is big everywhere no, right no now. Doubt. No doubt. No doubt. I, I agree. I, I, I think it's, If, if you're going to throw your life away, at least you did it for half a million. No doubt. But why does she have to... Why did I just get the shit? Why do you have to tell everybody and make yourself hot? It's in our blood, it's man. We're, yeah, we're different. It's a DNA. Oh, she, she probably could have got that Tesla anyway. She did for clout. She's showing off. She don't got no credit. She got a job. She could have got that damn Tesla. Ah, the sun has to shine. Yeah, the sun. We we different, man. Yeah, she, 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 good morning. You're, you're right. You're right, Brown Sugar. But she, she's scamming. So you why are you showing it for? She has to. She's the sun scamming. has to shine. She got that's her it. hair, dude. Look at the look at that hair, dude. That's a that's, that's a, a that's tribal hairstyle too. That's this. expensive, though, right? Yeah. Is, oh, is it? Is oh it? yeah. Oh yeah. yeah she, I don't she, know. Hair look a little raggedy. I I make her take that shit out. <laughs> if, I was the judge. Oh, I, if I was the CEO, man, you gotta take them braids out your head. Yeah, hey, man. You got them stole that shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> today accused of stealing more than half a million dollars in a credit card scheme. Prosecutors say Foster was an employee of the La Vista jewelry store at the Burlington Mall, where she allegedly charged higher prices and refunded the difference to her own credit card. The item would then be refunded onto a credit card, and this process, according to the police report, occurred over... Um, Eight, eight times over the course of three dates. And Foster's transactions at the store were not captured on surveillance. And there's evidence that result that was um, that has been elicited, uh, solicited that the defendant um, tampered with much of the surveillance uh, camera in the store. Foster is a student at LaSalle University in Newton. The police report indicates she's been investigated by university police for using fraudulent credit cards to pay tuition. Leaving court today, Foster did not make any comment, but she told police she took the money to make her mother feel less stressed and make friends and family happy. She stated, I'm sorry for what I did. Now, LaSalle University says it is the responsibility of students to comply with all laws, both on and off campus. They're currently gathering facts, but at this point, she remains a full-time student. Live in Oh, shit. They ain't even fucking kick her out of school. She <laughs> tuition. But remember, she got to work twice as hard to get half as far, right? 
her, her family must have been all glided because I'm telling you, had I was had I been her second victim, I would have beat her ass before she even made it <laughs> to two thousand dollars because I would have known it was her that stole my damn money. I would have all them raised out her fucking head, and I would have got out. <laughs> and with the charges dropped because I'm a son woman. Beat her head. Yeah, like <laughs> happens to her. I don't think anything's gonna happen to her. Yeah, I don't think so either, man. Me she either. Gonna, me either. Yeah, she's gonna find a way to let her off. Give me um, give me. Let's do one more city, man. Uh, Memphis. Uh, you from 